Here we're going to tie a fly called the wool head sculpin. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to wrap an underbody with some lead wire. And I'm just going to take my thread. I'm going to wrap through that wire several times just to secure it and to keep it from wandering on me and rolling around. This doesn't have to be pretty. We're going to uh, cover all this up anyways. And at the head of the fly I'm going to leave a little bit of bare shank right at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some chartreuse brassy wire and we're going to tie this in right here at the back. We're going to take this all the way back to where the bend basically starts to bend down the hook. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a nice big dubbing loop. I'm going to take my thread forward and you don't have to do a dubbing loop for this step but uh, I find it's a little easier to work with the the ice dubbing and also to dub a nice long body so we're going to take a generous clump of uh, olive ice dubbing here we're going to spread this as evenly as we can throughout our dubbing loop here and we're just going to spin up a a dubbing loop basically just build up a uh, rope of thread and once we've got a nice little rope of uh, ice dubbing I'm just gonna take it off my tool here we're just going to wrap this rope of uh, dubbing here forward now how far you go forward kinda depends on the size of the head of the sculpin that you want I like a fairly generous uh, bulky head on mine so I'm gonna go about two-thirds of the way. I've seen guys even go a little more than a half for those guys who like a big giant head on their sculpin. And I like the body on my ice dub kinda shaggy just like that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an olive zonkered rabbit strip and we're gonna measure out one shank length. We're gonna let that hang off the the back of the fly and what we're going to do is we're going to tie in this hair or this zonker strip and if you need to peel some of the hair forward it's easiest to lick your fingers and then grab it and pull it forward your saliva will help keep that uh, fur from getting in your way when you're tying it down once you've got it tied in you can trim out the the end and really make sure you've got this tight I put half a dozen or a dozen so wraps down to make sure it's really locked down. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this rabbit strip over the top of the the body here Then I'm going to lick my fingers again and just kind of peel back some of the fur right where the wire meets the the rabbit strip. I'm going to take it and just wrap over the top of it. Then I'm going to advance the wire forward and I'm just going to kind of repeat this process pulling the fur out of the way each wrap forward just work it through that that rabbit I kind of pull the rabbit up when I wrap through it that way it doesn't get trapped on my my far side the camera side that you're looking at if I just take it and wrap it, you can see how it traps all of it. So what I do is I kind of peel it back. Once I make that wrap, I draw all those fibers up. It just helps keep, 
keep any of them from getting trapped. Once we've got our wire all the way through the rabbit strip, we're just going to take our thread and capture it. There we go. Now the next thing to do is we're going to tie in a a throat on this fly. Basically it's a uh, like a bloody kind of gill spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clump of Sanyo's laser dub. I'm going to put uh, a fairly generous clump about so much. And I'm going to kind of tease it out so it tapers on both ends and I'll have a piece that's about two inches long. And I'm going to take my thread all the way back to the, the back of the head here. I'm going to tie this in so it's about the length of the shank. I'm going to tie it in kind of on one side of the underside. And I'm going to wrap forward. Then I'm going to peel back the other clump to the other side. Then if you have any pieces that are a little too long, you can just take them and kind of pull them, pull them out of the way. And we're going to kind of build up a bit of a taper with my thread here. There we go. Now the next step is to add some sculpin wool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clump here. I'm going to trim it so that it's again about two inches or so. And I want it to be about the diameter of a, a pencil. What we're going to do is we're going to take this clump. I'm going to do a nice loose wrap of thread over it. And I'm going to encompass this sculpin wool around the entire fly, 360 degrees, all the way around. Then I'm going to wrap forward, nice and tight. And then I'm going to jump my thread to in front of all this sculpin wool. And I'm going to peel all the sculpin wool back. Kind of have to tease it out force it all back. Then I'm going to do some nice tight wraps right up against the sculpin wall here. Forcing it back. I'm going to do the same thing again. It's about the same amount. Depending on how long you want your head to be, you can do this either three or only two times, depending on, like I said, how, how far you want that head and how long you want that head to be. Mine's kind of medium length, so I'll do three clumps of sculpin wool here. I might be only be able to get in two. We'll see here. Just make sure you've got it around 360 degrees. like I'll just be able to get two in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this sculpin wool back with my fingers and I'm going to jump that thread through all the sculpin wool, kind of tease out the fibers if you need to. 
And I really want to make sure I can push this wool back as much as I can. Now let's try this again. Wrapped forward just a little too much. we go. And the last thing you need to do is whip finish. You have to hold back all the material with your left hand and then whip finish with your right. Now we need to trim. To do this, I'm going to pull all the sculpin wool forward. Separate it from the, the throat. I'm going to trim the bottom flush. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. And I'll taper the sides so they kind of swoop backwards. Before I do my final trim, I'll actually take my brush, I'll kind of flare up any of the fibers that got caught. Notice how I leave that throat exposed. You want to make sure to trim all the wool out around the, the eyes. That way you can get your tippet through the eyes. And you can really trim this to your desired look. If you like it nice and full, you can leave it full. If you like it sleek, you can trim more.
Just kind of give it a final brush here. You can always trim more. You got to be careful that you don't uh, over trim. I've I'm kind of guilty of that a lot of the times. You have to kind of know when to when to stop and when enough is enough. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll just kind of comb it a little bit now. That's a full headed wool head sculpin. You can tie this in a lot of different colors. This is olive, but you can tie it in black, brown, uh, cream, really any color, any color that you like. You can find the recipe along with all the materials to tie this fly on our website in the riffle.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link in the description that you can click and you can follow that to our website and you can get the full recipe uh, and instructions there. And that is the wool head sculpin.